Hey, oh, hello everybody and welcome to Pasco Laboratories. It's so nice always to have you join us. I am JP and just let me tell you, whatever you're doing right now, stop. Just stop because if you know a biology teacher or you teach biology or you've got somebody who's got kids and they want to look at the microscopic world, you need to forward this little clip or you need to call them on the phone right now and say you got to tune in because not only are we going to show you some great stuff here, but Roger and I are going to give you a promo that you won't believe because we surveyed our biology teachers. We know you're out there looking for some great ways to bring the microscopic world into your student's home and it's difficult because your very expensive microscope might be sitting at the school and probably you're not. So how do you do that? Well, Roger, we came up with a promo that you're not going to believe. That's right. This is, is going to blow your mind. It is going to blow your mind. Because <laughs> any kinds of pictures that we can get into our um, into SparkView, we're going to be able to do some great kinds of analysis that we're going to highlight today. We are. And Roger, I looked online and we've got the microscope that we have here for our teachers at home that we're going to highlight. And you know how much this thing costs? Cost 120 bucks. That's crazy. It is crazy. I know. Because we're not selling it for 120 bucks. I'm gonna guess you've got a great deal for him. We have an awesome deal because we're not even gonna sell it for 99. Not 99 dollars. No, Roger, we're not even selling it. Not for, for 80 dollars. No. So Roger, what's this deal gonna look like? This deal is gonna be 70 dollars. We're gonna bring this microscope into your home and we're gonna show you how to use it. And not only that, not only is this just 70 bucks, but I'm gonna show you some free things you can do with our software today. You got some Pasco equipment. That's awesome because I'm gonna show you how it works. And so today the P stands for pictures. Pictures is right. We're all about pictures and I'm going to show you how we bring in some pictures and if you've never created what we call a spark lab, a way to share pictures with your students and a way to share some data with your students, I'm going to show you how and Roger's going to show you how and then we're going to bring this all together. Are you excited? I'm excited. Are you excited? Let's get started. Studio audience excited? Yeah, everybody's Don't forget, excited. All right. Give your call and, or text your friend. That's the bow just so they can see this. Absolutely. Send it in. And remember, we are live, and so we're able to answer all of your questions. And you can email me at any time throughout the week. I'm jkeener at pasco.com, and I really enjoy the emails. And really, if you send me an email saying, hey, JP, I really love either the physics or the biology, or the chemistry, and today's more about the biology, isn't it? Yeah. If you send an email and tell me what you're doing and what you're using with Pasco, I'll be happy to drop one of these nice little bumper stickers you can adorn your car with, and they make some great stocking stuffers too. Absolutely. Don't they, Roger? Right, so let's get started. I wanna show you a way that you can share pictures and share some data with your students in what I call a Spark Lab. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come over here to my computer, and I'm gonna ask Nolan to, to bring my computer screen up, because I prepared something beforehand, and I wanna show you what it looks like, and I wanna show you how your students would use it. So I'm here on my computer. You'll notice I've got a lab, Spark Lab, that I've already saved, and I'm gonna open up this lab. And what I'm doing is showing you how I've prepared a lab in SparkView, our software, that you can get for six months free. I'm gonna show you how I'm using this to communicate a lab with my students. Now in this first case, I'm communicating in a way that I have my students with me. Maybe I'm in a hybrid. Maybe my kids come back to school someday. And here, I've put together some slides within the software because, Roger, I don't know if you've ever noticed it, but sometimes my kids have trouble following directions. Do yours ever? Uh, <laughs> yes, they do. They do, and I think they all do. So if you kind of drop that into the software, look what I'm doing here. I start off with an introduction slide about what is pH and the pH scale. And then I go to slide two and it says, hey, connect your Bluetooth sensor now. Okay, well, I can do that. I'm gonna turn on my Bluetooth sensor. Assuming my kids are there, I would have my sensor. I'm going up into my Bluetooth icon. I'm going to find my pH sensor. Here it is. I'm going to connect to it. I'm connected. And now I move on to the next slide. And the next slide is already giving me some instructions to follow. It says, fill the beaker with 100 milliliters of distilled water, measure the pH. Well, I've already done that. I've got my water there, and all I have to do is click start. And here we go. Now I'm measuring the pH. I'm within the saved lab. I created it. I send it to my students. I've put a picture so they see what it looks like. You can see my picture. You see my instructions. I collect the data, and I stop. Now, watch what happens next, Roger. I go to the next slide and it's got another P for picture, shows That's it. what I did, and I'm able to even ask a few questions. Again, it's all part of the software. I've created a little bit of assessment. It was about 5.25. Roger, what is that? Acidic, basic, or neutral? We're in the acid range, so 
going to check acidic, and that's right. If I would have checked basic or neutral, it would have said no thank you. It's acidic, and I've got the opportunity now to actually explain my answer. So I've now created a lab within the lab data, within the lab software. I can write, I can show pictures, I can give some instructions, and that's just one way that I can kind of move through and guide my students. Now, Here's another thing that I've done, and in this case, I'm loving physics a little bit because I'm using our smart cart. And instead of having the students collect the data, I've collected the data for them. So this would be a case where your students aren't with you. They might be home. You want to share the data, but you still want to give them that foundation. You want them to be able to do this lab like we do this lab. And so take a look at what I've done here. I've collected the data, it's all part of it, and it says the following data was collected by a smart cart while changing its position. And I have that, great. Now I go to the next slide and it says, use the slope tool to determine the velocity between four and five seconds. Again, I've already shared the data. My students don't need to collect it. I've collected it for them. And now I can go in, I can choose between four and five seconds on my slope tool, which is in this range here between four and five seconds. I use my slope tool and there I have the slope and it's at about 0.448. And what are we looking at? Meters per second, so I've got its velocity. I use the slope and I've got that uh, and, I'm, and I'm able to capture that slope right there. So now my kids are analyzing the data. They're working within the data. They're checking the data within that area that I'm working. Um, can put a whole line on there actually in that entire range. So more like 0.365. So I've got some analytical tools that I can work with. Now, let me take it even further. Now I'm asking my students within the software, hey, using that data, create a graph of velocity versus time and compare them. So again, the data is stored within the software and I've already sent this home to my students. So I just open this up, my students are looking at it, what's the velocity, I'm choosing that, and there's the velocity data. And the question is compare velocity and the, um, the position and the velocity between those times and in my next slide here, it says, what information can you tell between four and five? And so you might take a look at these slides and say, hey, they look very, very, very similar. But in reality, the position graph and the velocity graph, though they look the same, you know that there's going to be some differences. While position is moving in a positive direction, the velocity may be slowing down and moving in a negative direction. And we see those differences. And that's what we want our students to be able to do. Look at the data analyze it, and then share the answers back to you. And so this is one way that I've incorporated pictures of either pH or I've incorporated pictures of the smart card, and mostly I've incorporated the data. And I'm able to share that data, and you're able to work with your students at home. But this, of course, is on the macro scale. I'm working chemistry, I'm working physics, and this is on the macro scale. And you might be saying, well, yeah, but I really want to show things on a microscopic scale, and we can do that too. We do that within the software. Right, Roger? Fantastic. Absolutely, JP. So what I've done is taken some, uh, because we have a couple of microscopes, I've taken one that I've run this morning um, and taken my computer out to catch a couple of pictures as well, and then to show you how we're going to use that scale so that students can understand better when we get down to the smallest of the world. So I'm going to go to my computer, and on my computer I've got a lab that's set up for my microscope. Let's expand that. And the first thing I did is just use the camera on the front of my computer to now, catch that scary picture out I, I, is, that, I'm telling is there you. somebody out in our parking lot we need to, to call, we need to call security. security that's right All right and, and scary care this, person in our parking lot uh, but one of the things that you can do with pictures specifically is that inside if you're taking this uh, picture is that we can use the measuring tool so I'm going to go ahead and just bring the measuring tool up down to the bottom there are some tools associated and this button brings those tools open I'm going to go ahead and click on the ruler and I know my thumb, for instance, is seven centimeters uh, long. So I'm going to stretch that out. And I'm assuming you measured that in, in advance. So I you, did. You know your thumb is seven is meters, exactly. seven not, centimeters. Not just because I work for a measurement company have I measured my thumb or my head or you any of those things. you know that. Right? And so I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to actually, the, the length of this in pixels is eight pixels. But I'm going to call that seven instead, and we're going to call that seven centimeters. And the reason I say that is because if I can measure one thing in this picture, I can go and measure anything else that's in that same plane, which in microscopic terms, we typically measure in the plane of the um, slide that we're measuring. So I'm gonna say this car is in that same exact sort of plane. So I'm gonna start from here, use my measure tool again, go ahead and get my measuring. And let's see from centimeters wise, 
I'm going to go ahead and measure that entire car. And I see that this car is 336 centimeters or 3.36 meters. And that is a, an accurate measurement, really, when you think about it. And so within the software, as long as you know one measurement, you're able to make all kinds of measurements. That's and, and we're doing this on the macroscopic, but I think you at home are probably already thinking, I know that I can use this at a microscopic level too. Right. And so if we can then jump over, obviously, if we take some uh, quick shot of some cells in this sort of range, um, we have slides that have some measurements that are in here um, that we can we can show and uh, we can go through and, and use these slides not only for uh, just measurement which we'll get to in the second part of the slides but I can also annotate some of these if I wanted to put in sort of information about each of these cells if I want my students to be able to then know that this is uh, if I'm looking at different phases I can put something like you know, interface for some uh, cell like that. Or if I want to be able to say, oh, this looks more along my uh, metaphase or some sort of uh, second sort of look. And we can label all of these going down through um, and use that to categorize what stage of uh, division these are in. Uh, if my students uh, can work through this as a lab, they can go through and find out really that there are about 40 of the inner phases, only about 35 prophases, and two, four, and another four of each of those divisions that we see in, in standard sort of cells um, that we can go, even from the simplest to the most complex sort of microscope sort of pictures that we've taken. So, so this, this is a really great picture that you've taken, and this, this was done right here with the, with the microscope that we're sending out to our folks. That's yeah? correct. The, yep. this, this very easy picture that you might want to be talking to your students at home about cells and the different cell division phases, and we've got a microscope for you. How much? That is the $70. That's right. This is a great promo that you want to take advantage of because this is also one of those cases of while supplies last. And I promise you, if you look online, we checked on Amazon today, they only had one. We've only got a couple, but we want you to have it. At 70 bucks, it can be yours. And you can see the pictures that you can take integrated into the software, conduct some type of me measurements, and do some good analysis with your kids at home. Yeah, so if you want to see sort of that whole process, I'm gonna drop out and then go on to this microscope as we have here. So you see that process. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start up and this could be a blank version of our Spark, Spark View. Um, I've placed the slide in there just so we can start by seeing these. Um, and some of that is, you know, as we try to get through our, our, our Pascal lives, we've sort of staged some of this. But let's drop into this animal cell here. This is an earthworm. If you take a look, we can see the side of the earthworm itself. Um, we're getting a cross section. Of course, there's not much to earthworms. So you've got the outer skin, um, the inner skin that has a lot of the absorption capability. But if we look at this, we don't see a lot other than maybe a central little circle. Um, here's another one. That's a good example of the nucleus. If you're getting your students, here's some um, skin cells there that are in, well, epithelial cells that have uh, a center, and you can see that there's some genetic material in there. What I was uh, saying is one great example of sort of an activity you can take a look at is if you've prepared some sort of slide or you have slides that are prepared, let's switch this out and then let's put in a uh, plant cell. So I'm gonna take that out. We're gonna go to the next slide here. Um, let's create a new one. Oh, I guess I could stay with this last one too, but this is as easy as we do. We're gonna switch back to the microscope and I'll expand this so that when we put in now some plant cell um, what we'll do is to uh, move that and go ahead and get this centered I may have to come back to a larger field of view okay and I'll go ahead and start the camera so we can see what we're looking at here Oh my God, it's that same scary person. I, I, know, I know. Right, so I mean, your computer has the capability of capturing two cameras, actually. Right. In this case, your computer camera can capture any images of you or holding up something like a, uh, um, in this case, maybe a pH sensor. You can capture that picture and integrate that into your lab, or you can connect it to another digital camera. In this case, we can connect it to the digital camera of the microscope right. and capture that image. And so you see, I'm choosing which of the two cameras. One was the camera that was on the computer itself. I've now switched to, to hook up to the microscope so that we can see those. And let me turn that on so that we can see there what's going on. There we go. Uh, now I just have to find my uh, little section of plant roots. And that's one of the reasons we pre-shot these so you didn't have to sit and watch me trying to find these. If you've got your student groups, you have probably run into this in the past where 
it takes a little bit of time to find a nicely prepared <laughs> segment. Hiding from you. Exactly. And that's why we're live, ladies and gentlemen. So while Roger is searching that slide for that little segment of the, of the sale, remember, you can email me or you can ask questions because we're happy to answer them. Uh, we've got Janet standing by, Brett standing by. We're here to answer your questions about any of the things that you're seeing today or this great promo opportunity that we've got available to you. And really, as, as he is now finding that, Roger, I think you want to expand the um, spark view on your screen. Yeah, let's there. make that as big as we can right. so we can see all parts of those. Good. And... Uh, Let's go ahead and we'll save a picture, and that's a lot bigger. What you'll notice here in our plant cells, um, that we've got much more uh, sort of a squares to, you know, sort of hexagonal sort of patterns to them. Um, we can see that there's a center, but also some of the parts that we can look in there for vacuoles and um, the cell walls are much thicker, more noticeable um, than those that we had from the animal cell that we started with. Um, what's nice is if I will finish with just saying, what happens to if this is a, a plant cell? I took an onion cell and I let it sit out all night. Um, and we'll finish just with this kind of an idea is what happens as they are devoid of, of good sort of natural environment. Um, and and these, are, these are um, onion samples that I know you prepared because right here in Pasco Laboratories, it smells strongly like onion. That's right. You can see the uh, onions that you've prepared over there on the... Uh, on the lab table, the, the slides that uh, you have prepared, the um, materials that you prepared there. And um, what we'll get a chance to do is to get a little closer look. Let me just bring that in. And I will finish uh, with a little idea here. Let me get that to focus. Come on. like putting you on the spot. Right. Pull that in a little, a touch more. We'll go back up to large field. And clearly you can see why we're live. We have not done any editing. Right. <laughs> and we would have done some editing, but there you go. Right. Oh, Roger, this is awesome because not only do you have the uh, prepared onion chunk, but you've inserted the measurement piece. Right. And so just as I can come in here and have done previously, I just want to show you if we have a pre-measured slide that we can choose our, um, go ahead and take that picture so that it's saved. I can now bring up the ruler tool. And if you've got these uh, pre-marked slides, I'm going to finish with just showing, uh, let's grab the ruler and uh, let's come in and we'll go ahead and pull those through. Of course, as my students work on these, I usually give them the time it takes to, to measure. Um, if I want to go ahead and make 10 of these, that's going to be 10 micrometers, micrometers. Um, it's a tenth of a uh, hundredth of a millimeter. So I can then just double click and, and change the scale and I can start to measure uh, my, start to measure my uh, actual cells. Go ahead and grab that and we'll call that micrometers. 10 micrometers. And the rest of my lab can then be involved in helping students then to go through and measure the width of, for instance, even just some of these cells that they see on the side. I'll measure one and uh, we'll move on then to get my ruler. Let's measure the width of this little guy that's right there. So one cell inside of each of these. Uh, course it's just dark enough in there I think it's 1.5 uh, micrometers you know that we're getting in and so that students can understand just how big cells are how big parts of those cells are they can then use them to determine sort of how cells are dividing uh, but all of those would be great support pieces for for teachers as you're um, taking and making a more of a lab and ex exploratory sort of experience for students using cells and in, in this case you had the the two prepared slides one of the i guess more of a dry onion yep. and after a period of time you should be able to go in and see the measurements i'm going to guess that the cells are going to expand right, right and right. become larger and we can measure that within this within the software itself and so we've actually communicated some great information about the cell the cell structure and the ability to measure so whether you're on a macroscopic level or a microscopic level and of course the microscopic level is really kind of neat because we do have this great microscope for you it does 
come uh, unattached, you are able to film things like yep. uh, okay. different people, or maybe I could film Brett, who's got a question. Can Spark View connect to other cameras and microscopes? Correct. As you have, uh, you see, we're just coming in through a USB port, and so if those are recognized in your operating system, then um, it'll become camera two, like I did at the beginning of this last section to show you sort of the live hookup of that uh, system, and it'll pull those uh, pull those images in. So um, and, first thing is to recognize it, and then the second right. step is in, to go ahead and In any case, where my computer capture. recognizes the digital camera, I have found that SparkView recognizes the digital camera. Yep. It communicates through the computer itself. So absolutely, try it with your digital camera, but, uh, and remember, the software is free for download six months or the for the trial version, and just uh, download and try it and, and connect, and you'll see that. And the other nice thing is, whether you're taking pictures with your smartphone or on your computer, you can integrate them in very easily. Let's, let's pop back over to my computer for just a second here. I want to show you the ease with which we're able to make these together and so watch what I'm doing here. I'm just I'm just showing you how very easy it is for me to open up a slide that I want to build for my students and maybe on this side I want to put a graph and on this side I'm going to put that image and this is where we were talking about Roger's been pulling images right off of the uh, microscope but in this case Maybe I want to pull an image like a picture that I took that I've got here on my desktop. And so I pull that image off of my desktop and I drop it right in. So now I'm actually pulling in either pictures that I took and put on my desktop, or you can put together an entire PowerPoint presentation and drop those slides in so that your students can go through the slides of a presentation and collect the data. And in any case, whether it be with the slides that you prepare as images or slides that you're pulling off of the microscope, you're able to see some really great stuff. And Roger, we want our people to be able to do that with a microscope that allows them to take pictures, that allows them to take video, mm -hmm. that allows them to do a lot of things that comes with some prepared slides already in there that you can use, some five blank uh, slides that will ship directly to your home so you can start preparing like these onions uh, that uh, Roger did here. And how much, Roger? We're looking at $70. We're looking so. at $70, and all you have to do is contact Isaac Martin. And Dolan, if you'll just put Isaac's email up there so folks know how to reach out to Isaac and say, I want that promo. What's today's promo word? Picture. Picture. That's right. Tell Isaac I took a picture of a $70 microscope that I can get at my home that I can have today. And remember, if you've got kids at home that want to do some microscopy, which is an awesome word to do around the Christmas tree, then by all means, consider picking this up. And so, Roger, we've shown a tremendous amount of exciting things here. I bet you our people are exciting at home, but I know that they are all planning for something even more exciting that we're going to celebrate next week. Next, what are we celebrating next week? Next week is going to be a GIS day, and that means that we can take any of the me measurement tools that we have and we can get them out into the field, and then we can look for patterns based on measurements anywhere that we go. And if you weren't overloaded enough for holidays, because we've got Halloween, and we've got Christmas, and we've got Thanksgiving, I know everybody is out shopping today for GIS Day, but Roger, you're going to show them something wonderful, and I think we even have a promo about what we're going to see with GIS Day. Nolan, let's show them. It's National GIS Day. I've got a weather sensor, and it's connected to my phone. Let's get out in the field and collect some data. I'm excited to get out in the field. I'm going to walk a couple of laps down and back. We'll put it in fast motion so that you can see what I'm doing and we'll come back into the lab and take a look at what that looks like on a map. Tune in November 12th on National GIS Day with Pasco Live to see how data and maps together talk beautifully and see patterns like you've never seen before. I know, I, I practically can't contain myself. <laughs> <laughs> so from the microverse to the macroverse, I think you'll find that our software is going to be a great tool for you to play around with imagery that you capture. Um, and it'll be great for showing um, images and patterns next week when we measure things out in the field. And we use a GIS and we take a look at uh, actually pulling in our, uh, our images and connecting it with location, which is what GIS is so good for. So for now, ladies and gentlemen, Roger, it was nice spending some time with you. We're going to spend some time again with yep. you next week. Uh, I'm going to hopefully spend some time again with you next week and until then we wish you all the best of luck great teaching and good day